Hi, I'm Mr. Richmond, and this is your section 1.4 lesson summary. This is the last section in our first unit um, before the first unit test. Um, and in this lesson, we're kind of bringing everything we've learned in the last three sections together. Um, and for this uh, video, I'm just going to show you two examples um, of questions you might see on tests or questions that, in my opinion, will kind of summarize everything that we've been doing in this unit. So for the first example, it says create an equation and sketch a graph that has an absolute maximum and is a linear absolute value function. So this is really gonna make sure I know my, know my stuff here. I have to know what this graph would look like. I have to be able to sketch a rough graph of what this would look like and also know what the equation form for this would be. Now, let's start with the absolute maximum. Okay, if something's an absolute maximum, that means it's gonna have at least one value that is higher than all the rest. So that can be my U-shaped graph or my V-shaped graphs, but it'd have to be the type where it has a maximum top. So I know I'm kind of already stuck between only these two graphs based on what we've seen so far. But the next part of it helps me make that final decision. It says it is a linear absolute value function. Well, this is a quadratic, so my graph should look something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and do my sketch part first. Okay, and when sketching these, I suggest you sketch the most basic form of it that you can, especially since it says to write an equation with it. Um, the equation changes quite a bit as we move these graphs, and since we haven't gotten into that uh, yet in this course, I would keep everything kind of centered here at the origin. So I'm going to just draw a linear absolute value function that's going downwards so that it has an absolute maximum. Now, the right of the equation part here could be a little tougher for some. Now, Hopefully we know the basic form of our absolute value function. So it should be y equals the absolute value of x. Okay, that's our most basic, basic form of it. And at this point, you're probably only going to deal with these really basic forms of it. Um, so I have y equals the absolute uh, value of x. And I kind of want to check and make sure this is right. So if I plug the 0 in, yeah, it's at 0, nice and easy. I plug a 1 in, absolute value of 1 is 1. Well, that's actually up here. I need it to be down here. So I think, okay, let's plug in a negative one. Well, now if I plug in negative one, I'm moving left on the domain. The absolute value of negative one is positive one. So the equation I wrote here is actually giving me the exact opposite. It's giving me this upward uh, slanting absolute value graph. I want it to go downwards and have a maximum. And so at this point, it's, it's tough because we haven't got into um, all the, the forms here and what all the parts of these graphs do. So I've kind of got to reason my way through this. Well, let's think. I want it to go down instead of up. If I went 1, I get an answer of 1 normally, but I'd like that to maybe be a negative 1. So maybe I'll just throw a negative on the outside here and see how that affects it. I plug a 1 in, absolute value of 1 is 1, then made negative, becomes a negative 1. I plug in a negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1, the negative makes it negative. Well, there we go. So, and you'll see this with other graphs and with the next chapter that all I have to do to make something turn upside down or flip over the x-axis is to throw a negative out in front of the main part of the function. Okay? We'll see that more in the next chapter. So this would represent an equation that has an absolute maximum and it is an absolute value um, function. And here's a rough sketch of an absolute value function. So I fulfilled what the problem wanted. Okay, and B, new problem, it says increases over the domain and is a linear function. Okay, well what does increase over the domain mean? It means as you read it, because we read all of our graphs from left to right, as I move from left to right, the graph should be increasing or going up. So it should be going upwards. Since it's also a linear function, I know it's a straight line. So they're making that actually fairly easy on me here. It's just an upward sloping straight line. Now, for this, I'm going to need a scale because we've all dealt with linear functions in here, so I'm going to be a little pickier about how you graph this. Now, it has to increase over the domain, so I know it's got to be sloping up, but again, I don't want to maybe make this too hard on myself, so I'm going to put it right through the middle and just have it going up. Now I could raise it up, but then I have to know things like y-intercept and how that changes the equation. And some of you may know that, some may not. So in my opinion for now, we don't want to make it any more complicated than it is. It just says linear function, increasing over the domain. So I'm going to put it right to the center and write the most basic form of a linear function that I know, which is y equals x. 
zero, plug in, zero, zero. Plug a one in, one, one. Plug a two in, two, two. Plug a three in, three, three. So it's working for that. Now you could do other graphs, letting you know, you know, you could have things that maybe have the y-intercept of one and a slope of two. Um, and you could write different equations such as y equals two x plus one. Um, but for now, for this, I, let's keep it real basic and, and kind of wait till we get to the linear function chapter to dive into that a little further. So at this point, we need you to be able to write the function or equation based on the situation and draw a rough sketch. Now, in addition to that, I'd like to maybe see you able to work backwards on this. And if I gave you a graph, just tell me everything you see about it, everything you know based on all the different terms and characteristics that we've learned, and then also define the function family it's in. Let's take a look at the first one, A. First thing I see with that, well, it's continuous. So, I should put continuous. Um, it's a U-shaped graph, and we already actually learned that now. If it's a U-shaped graph that has a particular name, that's the function family. So the function family that it is, is quadratic. So this is a continuous quadratic function. Continuous quadratic function, and if I look, it does have a value that is the lowest it ever goes. It has this absolute minimum. So I want to include that in there as well when describing it. So now I've given a good description of what I see in the graph. It's a continuous quadratic function with an absolute minimum. And while we're here, we might as well review some of the other concepts from earlier in the chapter, like whether or not something's a function. If I do the vertical line test to this, I can see it's only ever going to go through once, 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 once. So it's also a function. Just so we can throw that in there as a little bit of review. Uh, for part B, I'm going to do, similar, do this similarly. Um, it is continuous again, not discrete. So I would like to start with that. Let's see what else. Well, it's not linear. It does have a curve, so I could describe it as a curve, but the function family can maybe help me take that a step further, so I'll wait on that. Um, let's see, as I move across the domain, it is constantly increasing. It's kind of slow at first, but it, it does increase the whole time. So I'm gonna say it's increasing over the domain. And just so you know, I couldn't say that about this one because it was actually decreasing, then increasing over the domain. And so one uh, little tip uh, I have for you here is, if something is going to be increasing or decreasing over the domain, then it's not going to be able to have an absolute minimum or absolute maximum. It's going to really have one or the other. So if something has an absolute minimum or maximum, you'll be able to say that about it. If it doesn't have an absolute minimum or absolute maximum, then you're likely going to be able to say something like it's increasing over the domain or decreasing over the domain. Now based on that, it's not linear, it's increasing over the domain. Um, this shape here of something that's slowly increasing and then fastly increasing up is our exponential functions, our exponential family. And again, lastly, if I perform a vertical line test on this, it's passing. So I can also add to that it is a function. So hopefully this uh, helps you out a little bit, clears up some um, any confusion you may have had. And at this point, we're just kind of summarizing everything. We need you to know about graphs. We need you to know about function families and their equations and be able to recognize them um, come test time. Good luck. Thank you.